This is America Weekend. I'm Mike Bennett. One of our weekly contributors is Greg Quinn, who is a horticulturalist and naturalist and responsible for bringing the black currants back to the U.S. market. And in fact, he grows black currants on his current farm in the Hudson Valley, New York. This week, he tells us that all of us that have been calling them ladybugs all these years are wrong. Hi, my name is Greg Quinn. Welcome to this week's entry into Notes from the Current Farm. This past weekend, I went up into the attic of the old farmhouse here on the current farm to dig out the snowshoes for a winter's walk in the snowy woods. When I switched on the light, I was greeted with a scene that could have been described in a Stephen King novel. The walls, floors, and boxes were covered with beetles, ladybird beetles. Almost everyone I know has experienced this in their house in the winter. Ladybird beetles can come in shades of red, orange, yellow, and black, and with different numbers of spots or stripes. The ladybird beetle is quite common, with 5,000 species the world over. In English-speaking countries, they go by many names, ladybird, lady beetle, lady cow, and ladybug, although entomologists don't like this last name because they're beetles and technically not bugs. Interestingly, the scientific name of the family of ladybirds is coccinealid, which is derived from the Latin word coccineus, meaning scarlet. The name ladybird originated in Britain, where the insects became known as Our Lady's Bird, or the Lady Beetle. The Virgin Mary, often called Our Lady, was often depicted in early Renaissance paintings wearing a red cloak. The seven spots on the most common ladybird beetle in Europe were said to symbolize her seven joys and seven sorrows. When I lived in Germany, I often heard this beetle referred to as Marina Kafer, which translates to Mary Beetle. Ladybirds are considered good luck charms in many cultures. This probably comes from the fact that gardeners and farmers love them because they eat aphids and other plant-eating pests. A single ladybird beetle in both its larval and adult stages can eat up to 5,000 insects in its lifetime. Ladybirds can also be eaten by birds, frogs, and spiders. But the red or orange colored species tell predators to avoid it because they taste terrible, which is true. The ladybird will secrete a fluid from its legs when threatened, and the fluid is oily and tastes terrible, <laughs> or so I'm told. While almost all of the species are considered beneficial, there is one subfamily of this beetle that is exclusively herbivorous. That is, they only eat plants and can cause damage to crops. Their population is usually kept in check by a species of parasitic wasp, but in years when the wasp population is down, their population explodes, and they can be a considerable pest to gardens and crops. Now, they are often yellow with numerous black spots as opposed to the black variety and the red-orange variety we know so well. As with many animals, though, this description can vary. When one begins to understand how the population of one species of animal can have a direct effect on the population of other species, you begin to see how everything in nature is connected. Every time we introduce a species from another part of the world or attempt to eliminate a species that are pests to our way of life, we upset the delicate balance that is nature. <laughs> nature does a pretty good job of rebalancing things when they get out of whack, but not always. And she sure is working hard these days. So how come there are so many ladybird beetles in my attic, and probably yours? The ladybird usually goes through three generations a season. The last generation will find a sheltered spot in the fall to spend the winter in a tree with deep grooves or rock ledges. They will always choose the south or west facing side so that they have the benefit of the weak winter sun. If you think about it, they will always come into your house on the south or west side. They don't make any distinction between the cracks around your windows and eaves of your house and a tree. When they detect the warmth seeping out of your house from these cracks, they awaken and follow the warmth into your house. Now, I don't like to kill these beneficial good luck charms, so I have a little trick I've been using for years. When I see them, I put a new vacuum bag into my vacuum cleaner and vacuum them up. I then put the bag in a cold area such as a garage or a cold basement or even the bottom shelf of your refrigerator where it remains 40 degrees and they go back to sleep. If more appear, I simply put that same bag back into the vacuum and get those guys as well. In the late spring, just before the first rose blossoms open, 
And when the tomatoes begin to get aphids, I take the bag outside, open it, and sprinkle them out onto my garden and onto the current plants. And the ladybirds start feasting away and laying eggs as nature intended. Of course, don't do this if you have the yellow ones coming into your house. This is a great way to take care of pests using nature's own method of pest control and dealing with the dreaded ladybird beetle invasion. <laughs> For a rebroadcast of this and other previous notes from the current farm, and to find out why the healthiest berry in the country was outlawed, go to Currents.com. I'm Greg Quinn with Cheers from the Current Farm. With Greg Quinn, I'm Mike Bennett.